Neurocystic sarcosis is a neurological infection caused by the larval stage of the tapeworm tinea solium. It is common in the developing world. It is most common cause of the acquired epilepsy. Clinical features. Patients present with a history of exposure to an area in which the parasite is endemic and an adolescent or adult onset of the seizure disorder. The parenchymal CNS disease. Seizures may be focal, focal with secondary generalization or generalized. Headache are most common and may be migraine-like or tension type. Neurocognitive defects may include learning disabilities, depression and perhaps the psychosis. Extraparenchymal disease. Headache or symptoms of hydrocephalus. Symptoms of increased intracranial pressure may include headache, nausea or vomiting, altered mental status, dizziness and decreased visual acuity due to papilledema. Patients with numerous cysticercae in the basilar cisterns may present with communicating hydrocephalus or meningismus. Spinal cysticercae typically presents with radicular symptoms. Ocular cysticercae report visual changes. The differential diagnosis of neurocystic sarcosis could be tuberculoma, CNS tumor, or idiopathic epilepsy. Diagnostic criteria. The absolute criteria are as follows. Histological demonstration of the parasite from the biopsy of a brain or the spinal cord lesion. Direct visualization of the subretinal parasites by fundoscopic examination. Cystic lesions showing the scolex on the CT scan or the MRIs. The major criteria include Lesions highly suggestive of neurocystic sarcosis on the neurological imaging studies. Serum anti-cystic circle antibodies demonstrated by the immunoblot assay. Resolution of the intracranial cystic lesion after the therapy with albendazole or the prazequintil. Spontaneous resolution of small single enhancing lesions, usually single ring enhancing lesions less than 20 mm in diameter in patients with seizures, normal neurological examination findings and no evidence of active systemic disease. The minor criteria includes lesions compatible with the neurocystic sarcosis on the neurological studies. Clinical manifestation of the neurocystic sarcosis, example, example, epilepsy, focal neurological signs, intracranial hypertension, dementia. Positive findings from the CSF enzyme linked immunosorbent assay for detection of the anti circle antibodies or the cystic circle antigens. Next one is the cystic sarcosis outside the CNS. Treatment Medical care. Symptomatic therapy is the mainstay of treatment. Anticonvulsants are prescribed for patients with seizures. CSF diversion is instituted for patients with obstructive hydrocephalus. Corticosteroids are used for patients with cerebral edema or vasculitis. Antiparasitic drugs such as praziquintil or albendazole can be used. For praziquintil, the dose is 50 to 60 mg per kg daily in 3 divided doses for 15 days or 100 mg per kg in 3 doses given over a single day. The dose for albendazole is 15 mg per kg per day for 8 to 28 days. Both agents may exacerbate the inflammatory response around the dying parasite, exacerbating the seizures or the hydrocephalus. Thus, patients receiving these drugs should be carefully monitored. Next is the surgical care. Extraparenchymal disease was treated traditionally with surgery. Endoscopic removal may be able to replace open surgery for removal of cysticercae in the most cases. VP shunt is now commonly used for the treatment of hydrocephalus. If VP shunt is only used, the rate of shunt failure approaches around 75%. The rate of shunt failure can be reduced by the use of antiparasitic drugs and the corticosteroids. Recent descriptions of the valveless shunt noted lower rates of recurrent hydrocephalus, but these shunts were associated with higher rate of inadequate drainage. Thank you. Please do like, subscribe my channel and share this video.